All right, welcome everybody to the six o'clock wrap up of Tuesday, someday in August. Uh, it's the 14th? Good. I'm glad we have PIM people here. Um, it's the BOF wrap up session, and today we've got a slightly smaller crowd than yesterday, but we still had a ton of BOFs to happen. So I'd like to call each and every one of them for today's BOF wrap up. Starting with KDE India. Devaya, would you tell us what happened? Thank you. Yeah, so um, today in the KD India BOF, we had about 13 people from India at Academy. And uh, we had Yure as well. He wanted to share with us uh, his experiences doing events in Sylvania. So we did a quick round of introductions. We heard from everyone about how they got started with KD, their journey, what brought them here. And um, we decided um, on a plan, a framework for Confrat KD in 2019. And um, we also decided that we'd like to have more of decentralized events. Um, each one of these people going back to their universities in their cities, around 12 cities in India, and you know, um, talking about um, Kerry, getting people started, and then have that lead up to Confrat Kerry RN. So, yeah, a lot of exciting stuff in the plan. Continuing with the geographical theme, we also had a KDE in the Americas, BOF, and so I'd like to call on Sandro. Uh, yes, we had a KDE in America, BOF, with roughly 10 people uh, over there. It was a, a place where we share, shared of, uh, our experiences in uh, organizing K, uh, KDE conferences in the United States and uh, also in, in South, in South America, we try to to identify some uh, issues that have been preventing us from having a big a bigger KD process there, and we also considering uh, uh, we are consider, uh, considering having KD peop, uh, people in some conferences that have a very very big uh, audience for for free software in countries like Colombia and Cuba. We are uh, also considering having a first edition of the Latin American KD Summit in countries other than Brazil, trying to seed the KD community uh, over there. So that's it. Thanks, Sandro. Bringing KDE to new places is, is an important issue, and that brings us right to the onboarding BOF, which was run by Neophytos. I came prepared today. All right. <laughs> so, first of all, we discussed a bit about the developments during Academy. It was great having so many newcomers and new contributors here for the first time, at least from what I understand. And it was great that these new people felt, uh, felt uh, free to come out and reach out to us and discuss about ways to get involved. We also had a chance to discuss with other projects and what they are doing in terms of onboarding new people into their communities. So we got some ideas and feedback there and connections. Uh, in the above, we, we identified two paths of getting involved. So one is about the path through applications and people coming in because they are users of applications. And then the other path of trying to join KDE directly as an organization and see how people can help. And we discussed ways that we can help people onboarding from both paths. We discussed a bit about uh, junior jobs on Fabricator and how we could uh, like try to group them together and perhaps have the possibility of filtering them and depending on the skills involved and all that. We also discussed about <coughs> what we can do for non-coders since most of the discussion seems to be mostly focused on coders. So we want to have to engage other people as well that have other skills and other interests and there are ways to do that. Uh, we also discussed about setting up a development environment, which seems to be an urgent issue in terms of getting people like starting to work on the code and getting the code done. And we consider various solutions, mostly like around, uh, evolving around uh, containers, maybe VMs, Docker, and all that. So we need to come up with a solution that fits our needs. And yeah, more or less, that's it. Thanks, Neophytos. Uh, the visual design group had a sit down to figure out where they were, where they are. <laughs> I guess Andy is nowhere right now, so 
uh, we'll skip the VDG. All right, we've, we're, we're great at improvising, so here's Marco to talk about what the VDG BOF was about. Uh, so uh, the um, uh, the discussion, as far as I remember, uh, was uh, uh, in part about um, about uh, small small things uh, in the design currently, and another part on uh, more overarching goals. Um, so we. Um, uh, identified uh, uh, several uh, several things uh, that were then uh, um, um, then divided by um, uh, very small and immediate uh, paper cuts that have to be fixed as soon as possible, and then a set of uh, medium-term uh, uh, goals of. Um, of uh, design things that will be uh, very important but uh, are slightly more complicated, will take a while, and a list of long-term goals, of uh, overarching goals for the, uh, for the next year, I guess, um, at least. Um, and uh, we also uh, talked a bit about how to get uh, uh, more people involved in the VDG, also uh, developers, how to get better um, uh, communications, uh, communication channels to have uh, de developers talk directly with VDG people without uh, being intima intimidated of uh, them to uh, to tell you uh, now what you what 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 you did is horrible that you throw it away uh, to be assured that this will not happen and also on the other other way of uh, VDG people to uh, to also not fear developers because because there is a uh, this bit of fear on the on the two sides so the the the, the VDG person also uh, may have some some fear of uh, being told that, yeah, your mock-up says it's, it's impossible, and I don't, I don't like it. I don't want to do it. So, uh, how to make this this dialogue a bit more organic? And and you could say more, but yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Marco, for that detailed and impromptu summary of the VDG boff. There was a bunch of slots today for NEON, so I'd like to call a NEON... You're a shining example. <laughs> so, NEON BOF, uh, we had uh, three slots, and it, uh, three, in these three slots we discussed like various topics, including some of the pressing to-do items, uh, how our uh, like what we learned up, or uh, what we learned about uh, doing distribution using Ubuntu 16.04 with in last two years, and what we what we learned about the Bionic upgrade. I mean, like we are working on the Ubuntu Bionic upgrade from like quite a while, and what lessons we learned, and like, and there were also like some topics discussed about the infrastructure. Uh, overall, it was a great pop, uh, and we worked out quite some to-do items for the upcoming days. Thanks, Bushan. It's important to mention infrastructure um, because, in terms of security. Uh, it's important to know that what you get is what we actually distribute. So there was a GPG key signing boff as well. Uh, over 30 KDE developers sat down in a room to do the GPG key signing dance, uh, making sure that, yes, everyone is who they say they are. 
This is important because we use those GPG keys to sign our releases, sign the tarballs that turn into KDE. Uh, so it's important for us to have a web of trust among all the developers. That's a yearly ritual, and I'm glad we held it again this year. Thank you, Harold, for organizing it. <laughs> Moving on into a different room and back in the morning, there was the KDE and Free Qt Foundation boff. Was there anyone, is there anyone left from that boff? <laughs> so, at the KDE Free Qt Foundation boff, um, there was first a bit of history on what is the KDE Free Qt Foundation buff, and then there was a bit of a topic about apparently last night all of the top top management of the Qt company that nobody has ever seen together flew in to drink beer with the KDE Free Qt Foundation members, and that was apparently all that there was to that. Um, then there was a bit of discussions about retiring. Uh, uh, parts of Qt, and I think what the plan for those parts might be, might that the Qt company dumps it into the world on a BSD license because then the commercial customers can keep using it without problems, and if anybody wants to give it love for the future, they can do that as well. And uh, then there was a couple of war stories and uh, a bit of more history, and that was about that. Thanks, Suna, for that concise summary. There was a configuration boff that filled up a couple of slots as well. Have we got any configuration people? They've been misconfigured, I guess. <laughs> um, so we'll skip that one and move on to Plasma Mobile. There was an impromptu Plasma Mobile boff, so I'd like to call on Bushan to tell us something about that. So it was totally unscheduled WAF, uh, we decided at like very last minute to have it, this WAF. And I mean like in terms of attendees, there were only like four to five people. Uh, so we went through some of the tasks which we had uh, in the backlog about how onboarding our new contributors, what are the main pro pain points and like how do we want to approach those problems. Uh, we went through list, we created some more new items, some more smaller size to-do items, and yeah, overall it was a productive buff. Okay, we'll get a summary of the configuration buff from Kevin Kofler. Yeah, so uh, at the configuration buff, there was a pretty long discussion <laughs> uh, overall, and there were separate, several topics that were engaged, and um, most the issue, first of all, issues uh, and uh, nice things about the current kconfig and kconfig XD uh, implementations, and uh, also uh, uh, the one topic that came up is kconf update, which has several practical issues. Um, uh, and uh, then uh, the author of Electra presented his framework, and there is interest in, in getting kconfig to use Electra. The idea would be that, that, that kconfig uh, would use Electra as an intermediate layer, and then the current kconfig uh, uh, implementation would become an Electra backend. So in, in some way this would reintroduce the backend system into kconfig, but it would no longer be KDE's problem. Uh, kconfig people would only have to maintain the front end and the back end, and the, the whole backend management is then Electra's problem. And still it would, uh, uh, and it, it would allow the flexibility of using other backends like LDAP and so, uh, while not losing anything from the current implementation. Yeah, and this Electra has some nice features, so it, it sounds interesting. We'll see what's going to happen there. 
Yeah, and one highlight of the of the buff was the pizza that he offered to everyone, the Electra author. So you, if you weren't there, you missed something. <laughs> <laughs> Good technology is always accompanied by good food or something else. Um, good technology can also be accompanied by paper folding. I believe that's a tradition. So I'd like to call on the Kirigami. Uh, so on the Kirigami buff, um, we started. Uh, uh, I started to uh, do a, a little sy synopsis of uh, um, what were the what was the communication at the beginning to come up uh, with the uh, uh, UI paradigms that are more uh, central to Kirigami that are um, uh, that are quite related on uh, navigation and. Uh, uh, where the controls are, and uh, uh, to get also peop also other uh, newer designers to um, um, to to know that, so that that we can now um, uh, discuss more in detail what actually. Kirigami is in the sense of uh, how we present present it to the to the public how we present to people that want to uh, develop um, convergent application uh, that also came uh, with a pretty um, pretty heavy consequence uh, which is uh, the realization that we need uh, um, uh, we need much more documentation and we also need uh, as beautiful as possible uh, website as a as a landing page which uh, um, explains in a very visual way uh, what are the um, uh, the principal uh, uh, design paradigms that are in, at the base of Kirigami and then after that we started to discuss more more details uh, especially on a series of, of controls that uh, um, several uh, uh, people developing applications uh, wanted but are still not there in Kirigami so uh, uh, so that uh, will need to be uh, implemented soon but uh, this is more on an implementation detail uh, so the biggest takeaway was uh, was uh, we need to get together and build a beautiful website for it, which will be a ton of work. Exciting. Thanks, Marco. KDE is also all about choice and trying out new things and building more software, more interesting technology, on the efforts of others. And one of those efforts is the Maui project, which ties into applications on mobile devices. It ties into Kirigami. So someone from Maui here? Camilo? All right, so we, standing on the shoulders of giants. So um, uh, Camilo presented uh, um, the uh, three applications that uh, uh, he's uh, developing right now uh, the uh, music play player wave uh, the um, index i think file manager and the and the um, image viewer that it, he has he had a, uh, a laptop a phone running android and a phone running uh, plasma mobile so uh, everybody in the room could try uh, the same applications on the on the three devices, and uh, uh, he talked a bit on some uh, uh, some extra components that um, uh, they built on built on top of of uh, Kirigami, and uh, on on my side we were 
uh, we were uh, discussing also how um, how to do the relationship with uh, between the two projects so uh, that Maui becomes eventually uh, a testing ground for for new UI paradigms um, and those that gets then proved can also be upstreamed so uh, so then that bo both projects uh, uh, can gain from each other and and we will have uh, both on the Maui side and the Kirigami side and Plasma Mobile side beautiful mobile UIs in the future. All right, I'm a big fan of beautiful UIs on mobile devices. Um, and of course, there's more mobile devices than just Plasma Mobile. You're the important guys, but KDE applications on Android is also a thing. And there was a boff on KDE applications on Android. Alesh. Yes, so um, we talked about what we have today. The, like, it wasn't a lot about planning, but mostly making sure everybody knows what's, what's available. Like, we have uh, some applications that are specific for mobile since the beginning, like itinerary, which is pretty new. And if you haven't looked at it, you should. But then we have uh, lots of applications that we never considered putting on Android, but now they are, like Ocula or, or Conversation. So there's that. We also have some uh, servers building um, these applications for us so we can test, like we can develop them locally and just download the APK file and try it on our phone. I think it's, it's really cool. So I was showing how, how people can, can use that, how they can build uh, these APKs as well on their computer. And that's what we talked about mostly. Yeah, thanks. Don't, don't go far, Aleish. Because there was also a flat pack and snaps. Right. Uh, yeah, nobody got hurt. <laughs> nobody got even punched. No, it, it was uh, an interesting conversation, I think, about these, these formats. How, how can we let uh, our developers uh, think about how their applications are going to be reaching the users, which is probably one of the interesting points. The conversation well started on a higher level, seeing which applications and what applications can, can, can and are being packaged for, for these systems. And it went all the way down to discussing how portals work and what can we do to make sure uh, how it works. For ho those who don't know what portals are, it's the mechanism we have nowadays, or one of the mechanisms we have nowadays for these applications to talk to the host operating system because what we're trying to do is to make sure that these applications are, are secure so they're not stalling your data while, while they're letting you play a game. So portals are a way to make sure that this works well and both, both systems support it. So that's what we talked about. Thanks, Aleish. You, you can tell we can deploy an Aleish just by copying him onto the floor, and it, it just works. Um, we're going to wrap up the wrap up session with KDE PIM. Is Dan around or a PIMster? All right, Volker, welcome. So um, we reviewed the. Um, the larger tasks and topics from the PIM sprint and uh, looked at how we were progressing with this. Uh, one of those items is the, uh, the new product web uh, website. Um, Dan has a prototype of that, which by now even has uh, new content where we could use some, some help and review. Um, contact on Windows, uh, Hanna is making great progress with the platform underneath it, but the application itself isn't there yet. Um, PIM on Wayland, um, that is almost working. There is one problem with the out-of-process agent config dialogues, um, but Dan is working on that. Um, regarding the developer story, we now have a Docker image with the, the full setup that uh, at least Dan and Sandro are using in production. There's some KDevelop integration thing that they will sort out with Alesh. Um, then we looked at the results of the KML user survey we did um, since uh, since last year, that had more than 3,000 um, responses. Um, 
The most uh, requested features is unified inboxes, which Dan has implemented by now. Um, one of the most common complaints is search or related to search, which Dan has rewritten by now. Um, and another common complaint is the whole account setup workflow, um, which Dan is looking into now. Um, and um, we looked at um, the upstreaming of Tim stuff into frameworks. Um, that will be, or we'll upstream the syndication framework next. That's the RSS and RDF parser, um, which I think was also used in Plasma at some point. Um, and we looked at the currently biggest technical debt, which is the whole repository and module setup. Um, see how we improve the dependencies and reduce the, uh, the number of modules. Um, we looked at potential telemetry usage. Um, there's two questions we would like to look at. Um, which is the best default setting for the main layout and which of the thousands of grouping and sorting settings we could potentially get rid of. Um, yeah, that's at least the part I attended. I think there was another hour of fix my favorite bug afterwards. Um, but uh, I'm not sure if anyone is here who actually attended that part, so that's it. Thanks, Volker. In the meantime, everyone is being silly with the hat, which is, of course, the hat of authority. Um, <laughs> it belongs to the president of KDE EV. Uh, it temporarily to tell you, have a safe and fun evening, and we'll see you tomorrow for another day of boffs and tripping. Thank you. Thank you.